Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing good. In this video, I'm going to discuss CNC machining, uh, what it is um, and how you can send parts to be manufactured or machined out of a block of material. So the motivation for this video is um, CNC machining, it's quite a big thing. It's uh, like used a lot to uh, produce prototypes or even functional parts in products, um, automobiles, planes. And I studied mechatronics engineering and in the mechanical components, I never really learnt the practical aspects of this. Uh, but once I started working, I learnt the tips and tricks and how to do it. Uh, so I thought I'd share the knowledge for, with anybody that's interested. So this is just an animation I made of a mill bit uh, dropping down to cut out uh, this part. I'll discuss this part in a second, but I'll just show some Example, so CNC machining uh, can be used to produce a wide array of things um, from enclosures or hubs like wheel hubs, mounting brackets, chassis. Uh, here's a YouTube video of a CNC machine in action cutting away material from a block. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so there are some limitations with it and some sort of design tips you need to keep in mind or some guides you need to keep in mind. Looking back at this piece, uh, we'll notice that we've got these uh, radi radii corners, uh, which are called fillets. So the reason we need these is because the cutting bit itself uh, has a circular cross section. So when it's dropping down to cut the piece, there's no way it can produce a sharp corner. The value of this radius or how big it has to be, um, I've actually got this neat design guide. Uh, feel free to pause this video and look at this in your own time. But if we look at cavities and pockets, we'll see that an internal radius should be greater than one third of the depth of the cut. So that's something good to keep in mind um, with how big your fillets need to be. So without the fillets, this part would look something like this. And uh, if you sent this to a manufacturer, they'd say, oh, we, we can't manufacture this, you need to fill it the internal corners, so you just simply add some fillets of a suitable size and that's taken care of. So this part I'll just demonstrate what it's for, it's purely just an example um, and it's going to be an enclosure, so I've got the main part which is like a box and a lid and in there we've got an electronics board, uh, so essentially it's a, an electronics enclosure and uh, I'm going to design this to be watertight, so if that's something you're interested, interested in, it might be useful. There's a minimum wall thickness with CNC machining. So I've actually added some fins down here just for example's sake. Uh, these fins actually could increase the heat sinking capacity of the part. So say the electronics board was producing a lot of heat and that heat needed to be dissipated away. By adding fins, we're increasing the surface area. But anyway, um, my initial point was that there's a certain thickness. So looking at the design guide, uh, there's a certain thickness for how thin it can be. Um, so for metals, it's recommended that minimum wall thickness is greater than 0 0.8 millimeters. Um, I would say it's material dependent. Like if you're going with aluminum, that's probably a bit too thin, but steel, I, I would say would be all right. I'm intending this piece to be made out of aluminium, so I've decided that a thickness of about 1.5 mil should be enough. And also just looking at the wall thickness of the part itself, I've set that thickness to 2.5 millimeters. So 2.5, it's it, it should be strong enough for this application. Um, if you're concerned about that, you'd do some FEA analysis on it. Uh, but just generally speaking, you don't really want to go below 1.5 or one millimeter wall thickness. So with this part, uh, the electronics board is going to be screwed in place. So I don't want I don't want the actual bolt or screw going through the whole part and then attaching a nut on the other side. Uh, it's quite straightforward to just get the part tapped with a thread. Um, I might discuss that a bit more later on in the video or in another video. But yeah, I've also done the same um, up here. I've, I've got a lid and the screws are countersunk, so they're flush with the this top surface of the lid. And on the original part, these holes here are tapped with a thread, so we just screw 
these screws directly into the part. They don't have to go through and then be attached to a nut. In this case, it actually wouldn't be possible to fit a nut here because the distance between the actual tapped hole and the corner is so small. So adding tap threads is uh, very useful and kind of a critical part um, of CNC machining sometimes. Now I'm just going to open up this lid part here. So it's got this funky looking sphere. Uh, this is serving no purpose. It's just purely an example that this is actually something that could be machined into a block of metal. If you would imagine a ball nose cutter, so kind of like a spherical cutter coming down and following an arc like pattern over this. Um, and it would have to do that multiple times to get this smooth sphere. So that, that's possible, um, but it would add some complexity, time, and obviously cost to the parts. We can also get uh, some text or logos engraved. Uh, it's pretty simple. We just have a cutter coming down following the path of the letters. You could also get text embossed where it would be protruding out of the part. Um, Engraved text is preferred because less material is cut away. So in this example, it's just the actual material of the letters that's cut away. But if this was embossed and sticking out, it would actually be all this material on the upper surface that would be cut away. And again, that adds more time and therefore cost. So looking at some examples of some things that can't be CNC machined, uh, let's suppose we had a little cutout side section so this could be like a little pocket on the side uh, in this case this actually can still be machined if I zoom in here we could imagine like a circular kind of disc being used so the actual shaft is not interfering I'll just do another cross cross section view in this case the actual shaft isn't interfering with the material so it can come down and this could slide over and start cutting away this pocket but on the other side, I've got a much larger, deeper pocket. And in this case, this, this isn't uh, possible to be machined because this shaft could be connected to a larger disc to cut out this section, but the shaft would be sitting somewhere in this region. So it would be passing up. Um, it, ju it just wouldn't be possible. So these are called undercuts. And depending on the geometry, they may or may not be able to be manufactured. So you could discuss with the manufacturer that you're sending the files to whether or not they could cut these kind of things for you. So now that everything's are complete and we've designed the enclosure in our lid, what we want to do is save this part as a step file. So I'll go save as and I'll select step, step AP203 or 214, both acceptable. And I would save that and then that's the part I would actually send to the manufacturer or the machine workshop and that's what they're going to use to upload into their CNC machine and it's going to generate computer code for the cutting bit to follow um, to cut the material to cut the part out of a block of material what you also want to send is a technical drawing so just showing a brief example I've got a drawing of this part now one thing that has to be detailed on the drawing are the threads so in this case, I'm saying that I've got four internal M2.5 threads and then four threads, uh, M3 threads cut on the um, flanged face. So this is because that information isn't contained in the step file. Um, so you need to let them know what, what kind of threads or taps you want there. Um, I'll actually make another video on this a bit later on um, of how to create the drawing and add critical dimensions. Um, it's a bit of a separate topic, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Also, I've got a more developed housing here. So with this housing, I've actually got an O-ring sitting in a groove, uh, and this is going to be a submersible housing. So this is completely watertight. It could be submerged in water up to a certain depth, and the electronics is going to stay dry. You could imagine this could be useful on some kind of underwater vehicle or something in a harsh environment where you need to protect, protect your electronics. And I've also got these penetrator components, which allow cables to come in 
to the unit and out while maintaining a watertight seal. So I'll produce another video soon and I'll talk about detailing the drawings and how to send them off and I'll use this more developed version as an example of that. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learnt something. Uh, producing parts to being CNC machined isn't as hard as you might initially think. Um, I'll also actually send these to a manufacturer to get a quote back so you might have an, an idea of how much this would cost. I'll include that in the upcoming video. And it's, it's really satisfying and rewarding when you send parts off that you've designed and you get back chunks of metal that are exactly like what you created on the computer. Uh, if, you, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and thanks again. Have a nice day.